talking about the beginning of life there and how we sort of come into this world, I want to talk about the end. For better or worse, life is short. How can we add a sense of urgency to it? Well, I, I would say by reminding yourself that life is short, that's that's that'll add a sense of urgency by noticing. You know, I calculated, I don't know, my parents are, when my parents were in their 70s, 60s perhaps, I, I usually saw them about once every two years. We communicate a lot more than that, but we live a long ways apart. So I calculated, you know, well, my dad's probably going to live till his mid-80s or late, you know, somewhere in there. Um, and he's six, he's 70, let's say. I'm going to see him 40 more times. It's like, okay, 40 more times. That's urgent. So you better get it right because you don't have it. You don't have that many opportunities. You know, it's the same when you're formulating relationships in your adolescence, late adolescence and early adulthood. You don't have that many experiments to run. You know, and, and you get you get old a lot faster than you think. So. Atten attention, attention. Attention is an under rated um, faculty. It's not the same as thinking. It's watching to see what's there in front of your eyes and, and to guide yourself as a consequence of what you perceive. It's the, it's the faculty that transforms thought if you let it. So, and your conscience alerts you as well. Tick, 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 you know, you're wasting time. And very few people are happy with that. Some are burdened by it more than others, but virtually no, no one escapes that voice of conscience. I suppose to some degree that's that's the willingness not to engage in self-deception. Chapter 3 in Beyond Order is about that. People don't really repress the things they don't want to face. They just fail to unpack them. You know, like maybe you're on YouTube regularly and Every time you shut the computer off, you feel somewhat disgusted. But you don't pay any attention to that for a while, for two years. But then you decide you're going to pay attention. And then you find out, well, the reason you're disgusted is because you're wasting your life and you know it. And that disgust is indicating that. But unless you attend to the disgust and unpack it, let it reveal itself as informative, you don't know what the message is. You just have a sense of disquiet. It's not easy to transform that sense of disquiet into an actionable plan. And often you have to talk to someone about it as well. You have to discover. So it's not like you're repressing the emotion exactly. It's that you don't undergo the difficult process necessary to unpack it. It's effortful. It comes back to that assessing assumptions that we said before. If the goal of life is to live a life which, in retrospect, we are glad that we lived, it's important to give ourselves perspective, to develop that metacognizance, to step away from the urgent, to step away from the phenomenological day-to-day -day existence. Because the present self is a petulant child. It's lazy, and it wants the path of least resistance, and that glass of wine, and that new movie on Netflix, and the couch looks really comfortable. Very rarely does it do... Yeah, well, that's the danger with impulsive happiness is that it does have that present-bound quality. And in retrospect, that can lead to a life that's not well-lived. Generally, that, yes, yes, yes. Life definitely places phil philosophical demands on you, whether you want it to or not. And so it is useful to step back. I mean, that's likely why the trait openness evolved. That's the creativity dimension. That's the dimension that, that allows people to engage in philosophical discourse and to think laterally. And it, it does allow you to step back and look at things on a broader scale and to generate creative alternatives. The problem with examining your assumptions is it's very disquieting, you know, because you want things to act the way you predict and desire them to act. And you work within a set of axioms and you act them out in order to maintain that predictability, that desirable predictability. If you mess around, the more fundamental the axiom that you question, the more 
uncertainty you release. And some of that can be positive, but a plenty of it can be anxiety provoking. I mean, just imagine that you're in a relationship and you know, it's it's maybe a year into it, and you haven't formalized and finalized it, but then one day you allow yourself to ask the question, is this the relationship I want to be in? Well, that's a fundamental question, but just imagine now you're destabilizing your entire future. You're destabilizing your present. You're destabilizing your past. Because while engaging in the relationship, you're acting out the assumption that it's the proper relationship. But now you question that. That means the story you told yourself about what was happening while it happened, even though it's already happened, was wrong and something else had happened. And then you have to think through what actually happened. So it's unbelievably demanding. And the more axiomatic the assumption, the more certainty is cast into into troublesome chaos. Now, you could say, yeah, but the alternative is worse. And I believe that often that's true. But but the thing about the alternative is that you can always forestall it. Right? Manana, you can manana. ask that question tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You bet, you bet. And, and it's a very powerful temptation, and no wonder. You know, do you want to dig up the body now, or do you want to wait a month? It's like, well, it'll be more rotten in a month, but... But it's not a month. It's not now, right? It's not now. And so I, I understand why people don't want to delve into things, even if their emotions indicate that they should. I mean, I would see this all the time. If you're trying to settle an important issue with your partner, let's say, that can be a tremendously troublesome excavation process. And there's no shortage of pain. But... If you sort it out, then maybe things can be better. Doesn't mean it's easy or 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 uh, or pleasant. Quite the contrary, it's like surgery. It, it's not. It's like surgery to remove something, you know, that shouldn't be there. It's necessary, but man, it's still surgery. I think it's possible to develop a cathartic f emotion towards that. I think it's possible to downregulate the level of discomfort that you feel when you do assess your assumptions. On this show, a lot of the time, I try and present uncomfortable truths. So insights that are accurate but disquieting to learn. And that, to me, gradually exposing people and myself to more and more of these and learning that it's not an existential threat. It's not going to destroy my ego well, or learning or learning that it is an existential threat but that you can handle it correct which is really what people learn in in exposure therapy that's effective is the thing they're afraid of is frightening but they're tougher than they think and so and and that's very useful to learn it and it's, yes I, I i do believe well it's also the case that if you decide that you're going to delve into trouble as it arises, you're likely not to avoid the delve-in process more than necessary, so the thing won't grow into a monster that's quite so large. You know, and so once the relationship you have with your intimate partner is reasonably well constituted, and you decide that you're going to address problems as they arise, then it's less burdensome than the total reconfiguration that might be necessary before any of that has has been has been started it's like me, it's a form of mental hygiene i would say in some sense and so and you do get better at that with practice and um you you perhaps you also get less likely to jump to the worst possible negative conclusion you know so so and that's also useful you don't catastrophize so so much Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. It makes me very happy. Peace.